A woman said to me, do you think you're better than me? That is a very dangerous question to ask. I wish I had answered, yes, I think I am better than you. That's how I truly felt and that's how I would answer now, but at the time it caught me off guard and I chickened out. This was years ago, it was before I had removed all of the low quality women from my life, which if you haven't done yet, needs to be your number one priority. The situation was that this woman was trying to suck me into an argument and she was getting increasingly frustrated at my refusal to engage with her childish nonsense. I think me arguing back would have actually been reassuring to her because it means I would have sunk to her level. But I wouldn't do that. And so she said, do you think you're better than me? In my mind, I'm thinking, of course, isn't that obvious? Here I am minding my own business and you sought me out. You provoked an argument out of nothing because you would rather externalize your own pain and project your own inadequacies rather than deal with your own internal feelings of low self-esteem actually inside yourself. Right now there is zero comparison between us. I am acting like an adult and you're acting like a spoiled child. But I didn't say that and I really wish that I did. In this video, I'm going to explain why I made this mistake and why I'd never make this mistake again and give instructions to you guys so that if you're ever in an argument with a low quality woman and she tries this guilting tactic of saying, so do you think that you're better than me? You know that you can give the one acceptable answer in that situation, which is a complete and utter resounding yes. So what stopped me all of those years ago? Why didn't I just answer her honestly at the time? Well, there were three things operating. Firstly, there was my misguided belief that all people are equal. Second, there was a fear of being perceived to be arrogant. And thirdly, there was a desire to spare her feelings. Luckily for me, as of right now, none of those concerns exist. Let's go through them one at a time. First, let's talk about this notion that all people are equal. Now, in the eyes of the law, it does make sense that we have human rights that are ascribed to individuals, you know, that makes sense. We don't want group identity and group rights so that based on your race or, you know, sexual orientation, you have more rights than other people. No, in the eyes of the law, we all need to have the same rights. I agree with that. Also, I'm not religious, but I can understand that perspective that like in the eyes of God, you know, we have this soul, this undefinable essence. And in that sense, all people are equal. But spirituality and the law, you know, these are pretty abstract notions, when it actually comes to the raw reality of life, the idea that all people are equal to all other people is completely ridiculous. Nobody believes that. If anybody says that they believe that, they're lying. Human beings are highly social creatures, and so much of our psychological evolution was driven by the need to develop these sophisticated mental mechanisms that would track our place in the social hierarchy. We are biologically hardwired to compare ourselves to other human beings. We are constantly comparing and assessing our place, you know, next to them. Are they better than me? Am I better than this person? It might not be as absolute as saying something like, me as a conclusive entity on the balance of things are better than this individual, it's more likely to be specialized and segmented into specific areas. I'm stronger than this person, but that person is more intelligent than me. I'm better than this person at making money, but that person is better than me at reading social cues. On and on and on and on this goes, you know, endless comparisons that we all make. There's no need to feel guilty about that. To notice those areas where you are superior or inferior to other people is not a problem, it's completely normal. In fact, it is essential for your survival. It's also essential for our happiness. It is an important motivator when it comes to self-improvement. The desire to be better than other people pushes us to be better versions of ourselves. If all people were equal and there was nothing that you could do that would move you up and down the latter, it would be a massive drain on our motivation. If you really think about it, to say that all people are equal is hugely offensive and insulting. To say that those high quality individuals who strive to live moral, upstanding lives where they treat other people with dignity and respect and they give back to their community, to say that those people are no better than awful, toxic abusers who inflict suffering on other people because they're too cowardly to deal with their own issues, that is a horrible sentiment. To say to a victim of abuse that they are equal to their abuser, that neither is better than the other, is disgusting. You might think that you're some noble warrior, you know, doing the right thing, standing up for this 
lofty notion that all people are equal, but in reality, you're just perpetuating abuse. So you see, the idea that all people are equal makes no practical sense. Nobody believes it. Any woman who says that she believes all people are equal is lying. If you want proof, just look at her dating history, and I guarantee you, she has chosen boyfriends in the past who she has judged to be better options than all the other available men. Man A was tall, muscly, wealthy. Man B was short, ugly, insecure. And so I judged man A to be a better man, a better option for my dating. We all do this. I mean, we all should be doing this. If you're not choosing your girlfriends based on your personal judgment that they're better options than the other available women, then you're going to be miserable. But if people are not equal, and we all make these judgments and comparisons, then why did I run into that second stumbling block, that fear that answering yes, I think I'm better than you, was going to be perceived as being arrogant. It's like there was a guilt about my own self-esteem, as though believing that I was superior to another person was a sin. I certainly don't believe that anymore. Self-esteem based on positive comparisons against other people is not some luxury, it is a psychological necessity. Let me explain what I mean. Human beings evolved as part of tribes, and in many ways, our evolution was driven more by our social environment than our physical environment. That is the reason why, in your brain, you have reward mechanisms, pleasure chemicals that get released when you notice that you're performing better than other people. Remember that chapter in the Jordan Peterson book about the lobsters, how their brains are serotonin based, and the amount of serotonin that was released is based on where those lobsters exist in the hierarchy. It is the exact same thing with humans. If you don't want to feel depressed, then you need to be able to look at the other people around you and make positive comparisons. You know, if you want to feel happy and you want to feel good about yourself, have that positive self-esteem, you need to feel good about where you stand. Any abstract notions about equality and no person being better than any other person is not going to be strong enough to overcome millions of years of evolution that has specifically hardwired your biology and your neurology to make these comparisons. But then if this self-esteem based on comparison is unavoidable, then why the fear about the perception of arrogance? Obviously, we want to be cautious about being delusional, having a perception of ourselves that is far grander and more impressive than is actually warranted. But assuming we have the self-awareness to be able to differentiate between an unmerited cockiness based on delusions of grandeur and an actual fact-based assessment of our true talents and abilities, why should we fear the perception of arrogance when it's just a legitimate acknowledgement of our own virtues? I think it is because there is an unwritten social rule that says that even if you feel really good about yourself and you have positive self-esteem, it is bad taste to show off publicly or to brag about it. You must keep all of your positive self-thoughts to yourself because to speak them out loud is not tactful. And that's what tripped me up. When this low quality woman challenged me and said, do you think that you're better than me? I was caught and I felt that Acknowledging the truth that I did feel like I was better than her would be crossing that, that line from confidence to arrogance. I would not make that mistake now because here's the thing. Even if I did think that I was better than another person, I would never volunteer that information unsolicited. It's not like I go around saying to people, I think that I'm better than you because yeah, that's arrogant, but that's not valid in this situation because she explicitly asked me to answer her question. And of course, I'm going to tell her what I think. Now, she might perceive me to be arrogant, but who cares what she thinks? She's a low quality woman who's trying to deal with her own insecurities by sucking me into an argument. Her opinion means nothing. She can think whatever she wants. The opinions of low quality women are completely irrelevant. Which brings us to the final reason why I was reluctant to just answer honestly and say, yes, I think I'm better than you. And that is compassion. I didn't want to hurt her feelings. And I know that to feel inferior to another person is not going to feel good. And to hear somebody declare that they are superior to you, that's going to hurt. As toxic as this woman was being, I wanted to spare her that. Just out of the decency that I give as a default to everybody. But that is the exact problem. She knew that as a good person who doesn't like to hurt other people's feelings, I would be reluctant to answer her question and say yes. Ayn Rand wrote about this a lot. People who 
use your own virtue against you. This woman had acted atrociously and she did not want to take responsibility for her actions. Her question, do you think that you're better than me, was an attempt to shift the focus away from her horrible behavior and onto my perceived shortcoming of judging her to be inferior. It's like a get out of jail free card. She's thinking, I can be acting spoiled and irrational and entitled. And through my disgraceful behavior, naturally his opinion of me is going to be sinking lower and lower. But at any point of the argument, I can draw attention to his diminished opinion of him and accuse him of believing that he's superior to me. I can use his virtue against him and manipulate him into thinking that his perception of reality and subsequent judgment of me in the negative is actually a fault with him. I can make him feel guilty and as a convenient byproduct, prevent him from making any further negative judgments about me, lest his guilt grow larger. That would not work on me now because I see how transparently manipulative it is. If anybody should feel guilty, it is her. She's the one who started the argument. She's the one who tried to use my compassion for her against me. She's the one who put me in an awkward position of having to lie and spare her feelings or tell the truth and hurt them. As far as I'm concerned, if you're willing to ask the question, then you take responsibility for hearing the answer. If you don't want to know the answer to the question, do you think I'm better than you? Don't ask. You might not like the answer, but that's on you. I'm not responsible for how you feel. You lost my compassion when you started down this path, and I refuse to be a victim of my own virtue. Now, for anybody wondering, this isn't a story based on a woman that I dated. This is from years ago, back when I was a teenager, and it was a woman that I was connected to through family. I don't speak to her anymore. I don't speak to people like her anymore. But even though this wasn't explicitly a dating story or something from a romantic relationship, I believe that the lessons here are directly applicable to those situations. If some low quality woman ever picks an argument with you and then tries to get out of it by asking the question, do you think that you're better than me? Know that the only acceptable answer is to look her in the eye and say, yes. Can you ever be friends with women? Is it ever appropriate to date the ex of a friend? And what do you do when a woman demands that you physically fight someone? All of these topics and many more are covered in exclusive videos available to my Patreon page. This includes my latest video, which is an examination of a poll that I ran here on the channel, where I asked people, do you care most about men, most about women, or do you care equally about both men and women? In this video, I talk about why I ran this poll, I talk about what the results have implications for with regards to my audience, and I give an examination of the comment section. I look at the merits of the arguments presented as to choose one option over the other, as well as what my goal is with the channel in terms of reaching those people who don't have the same option that I would have chosen. For every video that I post here on YouTube, I post an additional bonus video on my Patreon page. That means that at the moment, you're only seeing half of the total content that I create. If you would like access to the other half, then please go and sign up at my Patreon. It's just a $5 a month subscription and you get instant access to a whole bunch of exclusive content. It's a wonderful way to support the channel and I would love to see you over there.